Disclaimer. Please forgive me now for there may be mispronunciations in this video. October 1st, 1948 is the date George F. Gorman had experienced a mysterious white orb at a high altitude above Fargo, North Dakota. Gorman, a veteran World War II fighter pilot, went into a one-sided dogfight that lasted 27 minutes in midair. I'd never seen anything like it, Gorman told the local newspaper following the October 1st, 1948. If anyone else had reported such a thing, I would have thought they were crazy. What was unique about this encounter was not the length of the actual incident, but that it was recorded both on the ground and in the sky by numerous reputable sources. At the time of the encounter, Gorman was a 25-year-old former fighter pilot who served as a second lieutenant in the North Dakota Air National Guard. It was this role that had him behind the flight controls of a P-51 Mustang when the incident occurred. He was taking part in a cross-country flight alongside other National Guard airmen. But while the other pilots landed at Fargo's Hector Airport, Gorman stayed in the air to get some night flying time in the cloudless conditions. Gorman circled his P-51 over a lighted football stadium. He was preparing to land at about 9 p.m. He could see a Piper Cub plane 500 feet below him, but what he experienced next would make history. He witnessed what he believed to be a taillight of another craft passing on the right, though the tower had no other object on the radar. He decided he should take a closer look and pulled his plane up and closed within about 1,000 yards. It was about 6 to 8 inches in diameter clear white and completely without fuzz at the edges, he said, of the object in his report. He was blinking on and off. As I approached, however, the light suddenly became steady and pulled into a sharp left bank. I thought it was making a pass at the tower. Gorman followed, trying in vain to catch up with the object, reporting that he finally got behind it around 7,000 feet, where it made a sharp turn and headed straight for the P-51. Gorman dived and said the light passed over his canopy at about 500 feet before cutting sharply once more and heading back in his direction. Just as the collision seemed imminent, once again, Gorman said the object shot straight in the air in a steep climb, so steep that when he tried to intercept, his plane stalled at about 14,000 feet. The object was not seen again, but according to Gorman, he had been engaged in aerial maneuvers with it for 27 minutes by the time he brought his plane into land. He went on to report that he noticed no sound, exhaust trail, or order from the object, and while he reached up to 400 miles per hour while in pursuit, he couldn't keep up with the white orb. I am convinced there was a definite thought behind its maneuvers, Gorman said in a sworn statement to his commander. I am further convinced the object was governed by the laws of inertia because its acceleration was rapid but not immediate, and although it was able to turn fairly tight at a considerable speed, it still followed a natural curve. Gorman would report that he did black out temporarily to the excessive speed he reached in attempting to turn with the object, quoting, I am in fairly good physical condition, and I do not believe that there are many, if any, pilots who could withstand the turn and speed affected by the object and remain conscious. The object was not only able to outturn and outspeed my aircraft, but it was able to attain a far steeper climb and was able to maintain a constant rate of climb far in excess of my aircraft. Fortunately for Gorman, he wasn't the only one to see the mysterious object that night. Air traffic controllers Lloyd D. Jensen and H. E. Johnson, who were manning the Hector Airport Tower, also saw it. According to Johnson, who reported seeing both the Piper Cub and the UFO at the same time, he quote said it was traveling at a high rate of speed and was fast enough to increase the spacing between itself and Gorman's fighter. Johnson described the object as appearing to be only a round light perfectly formed with no fuzzy edges or rays leaving its body. The two pilots in the Piper Cub, Dr. A. E. Cannon and his passenger, also saw the object, both in the sky and upon their return to the airport, where they immediately joined the traffic controllers in the tower. Cannon described the light as moving very swiftly much faster than the 51. Two civil Aeronautics Authority employees were on the ground, also reported seeing the object. U.S. Air Force investigators from Project Sign, which later became Project Drudge and ultimately Project Blue Book, arrived in Fargo, where Guider countered measurements of Gorman's plane revealed heightened radioactivity, though this was explained away as a side effect of the high altitude flying that took place. So what was it? There are a few theories. One being that it was another aircraft. But Dr. Travis S. Taylor, 
an aerosmith engineer and author of Introduction to Rocket Science and Engineering, believes that any other aircraft would have been apparent to Gorman. Another theory is that it may have been a top secret test craft from the Soviets. The Soviets had begun testing the R-1 rocket, a Soviet version of the German V-2 of World War II, the same year as the Gorman's encounter. However, the R-1 didn't have the range to go from wherever their launch capability was in the Soviet Union to Fargo, says Taylor. It was a dumb rocket. All the rockets at the time were projectiles. They used aerodynamics mostly to guide them. They could do slow maneuvers, but if they did a fast maneuver, they would start tumbling apart. And of course, there is the weather balloon theory. Back in Fargo, after the Air Weather Service revealed a head release, a lighted weather balloon 10 minutes before Gorman first saw the object, investigators jumped at it being the likeliest explanation. As for the incredible movements witnessed, the report said that those were due to Gorman's own maneuvers as he tried to chase the bright object. The investigators wrote, his high speed gave the balloon the appearance of moving in opposite directions as he passed by. Lastly, another added theory was the appearance of Jupiter was extra bright that night, hypothesizing that Gorman had been attempting to chase the bright dot of the planet at the same time the weather balloon was in range. We were doing Project Mogul at the time, which was a high altitude balloon fitted with high powered microphones that we were trying to listen to see if the Soviets were doing above ground nuclear testing, says Taylor. The theory of the weather balloon would become the official cause of the encounter in the Project Blue Book pile. Now even the government investigators found Gorman to be a credible witness, noting that he did not make the impression of being a dreamer. He reads little and only serious literature. He spends 90% of his time hunting and fishing, drinks less than moderately, smokes normally, and does not do drugs. He appears to be sincere and serious individual who was considerably puzzled by his experience and made no attempt to blow his story up. Gorman maintained his silence and returned to the Air Force full time, eventually retired at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in 1969. He never spoke publicly about the encounter again. He did tell his friends he was never convinced that he had been dueling with a lighted balloon for 27 minutes. Gorman passed away in 1982. What do you think? Did you like this video? Want to support this channel? Feel free to check out my Patreon page where I create content on cryptids, hauntings, alien abductions, serious killers, and much more. Can't support me there? Like, comment, and subscribe here.